All right, let's start. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about fast forward upgrades um, and the easy button to move from OpenStack Newton 10 to 13. I want to remind everyone that this is the Red Hat sponsor track. So everything that we're going to talk about is, of course, based on the work of the, the community. But we're going to be very specific about the problems and concerns and issues and how we solve those problems for our Red Hat customers. So feel free to ask any question, but just know that that's where we are. So again, thank you for joining us. We're going to talk in general about the OpenStack lifecycle. Um, you are hear about um, some of the community projects that we're going to be uh, working with and how we build products for our customers and solutions. So we are Maria and Chris and Darren. And our names are there. We're going to be sitting here uh, at the end of the talk if you want to reach out to us for any questions. Also, we have some developers in the audience that have worked on these procedures as well. And so we're going to leave a portion of this talk at the end for questions and answers. So save your questions for the end or start thinking about questions. <clears throat> All right, so this is not the first time we mentioned fast forward upgrades in OpenStack. In uh, 2016, we introduced Red Hat OpenStack 10 uh, based on Newton. That was our first long life release. Uh, and we did this responding to our customer needs to remain in the same release that already fulfilled their needs. So as we were coming from 7 and 8 and 9, 10 felt like a good release that was, for most of our use cases, feature complete. So our customers didn't want to plan to upgrade and have changes to their infrastructure every six months or even every year. They wanted to be able to stay in a stable release that was already good enough for them. And we needed to give those customers that wanted stability that out. At the same time, we didn't stop releasing. Uh, we also kept up with the cadence of the community and continued to contribute upstream, which is what we do. Um, and uh, in fact, we started working on this fast forward procedure back in the Okada cycle with proof of concepts and conversations with the community. Of course, we didn't know what Queens was going to look like back then, but we did know that there was going to be a lot of disruption and changes in the way that we delivered OpenStack. Um, if you remember, uh, back in Okada cycle, there was no talk of containers. Some projects like Cola started to, to come up and introduce, but we, we hadn't broadly adopted that as part of the community. But then we knew that was coming, and we knew that we needed to find a solution to help the customers that were already staying in that 10 long life release. They needed a way to get to then the next long life that we knew was going to be 13 based on Queens. Um, um, and we needed to um, upgrade them through these three releases without staying in the mid-releases. And those non-trivial changes that happen in between uh, one, one of which fully containerized OpenStack services. As you can see here, uh, OpenStack 10 still has extended life support, and we have seen a lot of customers adopt that route, and uh, they're not also in a hurry to try any fast-forward upgrade because they still have quite a bit of time to remain in 10. At the same time, we also have customers that have said that there are features in 11 and 12 um, that are necessary for their operations and they have already built in expertise in OpenStack and they have teams that are ready to perform these upgrades. So they have upgraded from 10 to 11 to 12 to 13. That path is not the one that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the move from 10 all the way to 13 through the fast forward um, upgrade. Also, this is not the, the first time that we're talking about here. Back in Sydney, we introduced this particular cadence that I'm talking about, this long life release. Uh, oh, sorry, before, before we go into that, um, let's poll the audience. We have a um, you know, pretty full room, and we want to find out if any of you are um, running OpenStack-based clouds. Please raise your hand. That was a trick question, just to get everybody to understand that you have to raise your hand. OK, so are any of you Red Hat customers? All right, now let's try to, are you running uh, Red Hat OpenStack prior to OpenStack 10? So are you on 7, 8, 9? 
Hopefully nothing before that. Okay. How about Red Hat OpenStack 10? All right. Um, anyone moving to 11? No. On 12? <laughs> All right. Great. So some of the ones that are in 12, you either upgraded in place from 10 to 11 to 12 or just fresh install on 12. So for you, the route would be obviously the upgrade from 12 to 13, which we obviously still support. We're not going to cover that. You will see some of it um, because we do utilize some of the same procedures for this fast forward upgrade. Um, and another thing that you might be interested in is the fact that once you're in 13, you can stay there for a very long time fully supported. All right, thanks for that. Um, so back in uh, OpenStack Sydney Summit, we talked about this long life releases and why we were doing this approach and why did, was it different from the cadence that the OpenStack Foundation was following, which was basically releasing every six months. So we explained that while we're providing this long life support, we still, as Red Hatters, con continue to contribute to the, to the upstream community and continue to release at, the, at, the, at that cadence. At the Vancouver Summit, we had um, with some developers that actually worked on the procedure, both from the proof of concept perspective as well as following through to the actual implementation. Um, and we showed the developer angle of exactly how the fast forward upgrade works and how, um, how all the intricacies about what's upgrading when, when things happen. Um, and today, we actually have, uh, we will hear from solution architects from the Red Hat Tiger team. Their perspective is different. They come from the field. They have seen multiple uh, customer implementations, and they're going to give us a demo about exactly how this fast forward procedure works. Their feedback and their angle is, is based on our customer feedback. We will leave time uh, at the end of the presentation, and you can find us after the session. With that. Hi, guys. Uh, so, so, yeah, just to um, and again say what Maria just said, uh, the one thing that differentiates us from, from maybe the presentation you've seen before, we are the field people, right? So we have a pleasure to, to work with our uh, clients, and we take the best tech that our smart developers are putting together, and we're always translating them the, the tech into the uh, business solutions or trying to solve the business problems with it. Uh, so with that said, we want to break the rest of the session uh, between two sections. Uh, the the one, one section or is going to focus on what our customers typically ask us uh, when we go uh, do the workshops for the fast forward upgrades, what do they usually worry about and what do we typically recommend uh, for them uh, and how do we answer these questions. And then together with, uh, with Darren, we're actually going to show you the process from door to door of the fast forward upgrade. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty exciting. So these are the, the first three questions that we typically get. Uh, so what, what prep work steps are recommended to evaluate fast forward upgrade? Uh, and there's a there's couple things that comes to, the, to mind uh, right away. Uh, so first, you definitely don't want to do this on your production environment right away, right? And this, is, this might mean as, this might be a common sense, but uh, you will be surprised how many people just want to jump their gun and, and just you know, start, start getting it, uh, rolling the, the updates into production. Um, another, another step that's highly recommended is get yourself familiar with the, with the OSP 13, which is get yourself familiar with the installation of the, of the Queen's release of, of Red Hat OpenStack. There's a lot of changes between the, the Newton and, and Queen's from the configuration perspective. There was a huge move for us to move to containerized services. And they do require a, a certain amount of changes, a new way of thinking uh, and looking at your services. Um, so I would say that's, that's probably some of the recommendations I would do there. Uh, so which versions of OpenStack are supported by FFU process? So we, in purpose, we ask you guys, what versions do you, do you guys use? So the FFU provided by, by Red Hat, you obviously have to use the Red Hat tools for the deployment, right? So you, you have to, you have to run uh, Red Hat Director, Red Hat OSP platform in order to do it. Um, and from the release perspective, you have to be on Newton release, right? Which is equivalent to OSP 10. Um, can you be 
can you do that with the, with the release that was earlier? You, you could, but with the extra step of getting to the OSP 10 slash Newton first and then uh, doing the fast forward upgrade from 10 to 13 or from Newton to Queens. Um, Okay, so how can we, how can my ops team minimize the risk of placing my cloud into the bad state, right? So that's pretty important, right? We don't want to start the process and end up in a, in a bad state and not being able to recover out of it. Uh, so, so our recommendation for that is uh, make sure you back everything up, right? And, and we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later, but there's another session that we're going to recommend uh, to, to go to that will focus 100% on how do you make the process automatic of backing up your, your infrastructure. All right, so moving on to the demo part of the, of the presentation. So what we've done... Uh, originally, we prepared this cooking show style demo for you guys. Uh, so by cooking style, uh, what I mean, we, we spawned five separate environments and we, up, we upgrade each of them to the different uh, part of the fast forward upgrade. Unfortunately, we did some timing and we could not be able to finish this whole process even in the in this cooking show time in, in a 40 minutes time frame. So we, we did the next best thing and we recorded that and tried to trim all of the unnecessary pieces and, and we're gonna show you that in the, in the videos in a bit. So this is the environments we've been working on for this demo. Uh, so there's six nodes total, three controllers, two computes and under cloud. And I mentioned about, you know, the very first step you do is the, the backup and restore. Um, and th there's, there's a way to backup both under cloud and over cloud. So your, your installer, if you will, and your, and your production cloud. And a good friend of ours sits on the back there, Dan, Dan McPherson. He's going to have a session tomorrow at uh, 1.40 that will uh, describe exactly what you need to, to do to get your, your uh, environment backed up and, and, and even more in an automated way. All right, so in the, in the first phase, in the first video, we're going to show you uh, how we're moving the Red Hat OpenStack under cloud from OSP 10. Uh, actually, this is, this is the first part is the minor upgrades of the, of the environment. So we're going we're gonna to still go from OSP 10 to the OSP 10Z, where Z is the latest one. So who here has actually done any, any kind of update or upgrade using Triple O? Okay, so you all know the great messages that are uh, that spawn. So that that's kind of the stuff we cropped out, um, which you'll see here. So um, the first thing uh, what you wind up doing is first you have to stop the uh, the undercloud services before you actually perform the update. Um, so here we're, you, we we stop all of the services. Um, the next thing you'll wind up doing is. Um, I'm showing here that we're running uh, Open vSwitch 261, which is uh, what is uh, OpenStack 10 is based on. Um, what, what happens is uh, when you run the OpenStack uh, undercloud uh, upgrade, it will actually update all of the packages, but it doesn't actually restart anything. So at the conclusion of the actual update process, we'll still see Open vSwitch is still at 261, uh, which is what requires an actual reboot of the node. This is true for your undercloud and your overcloud nodes. So when you're actually going and doing the 10.z to your overclouds, uh, you can then do uh, you utilize a uh, live workload migration um, to be able to move your workloads around so to keep them uh, up while you're actually doing the 10.z up update. So all those messages flew by, but it actually the time there's a timer on the top right that is consistent throughout all of the videos. Uh, so here we're just showing that it's still at 2.6.1. And then we uh, wind up rebooting the nodes um, and then showing that it's at uh, 291. So again, this is just the undercloud that we're doing first. So the, the update for the undercloud runs fairly quickly. So that was about 19 minutes uh, to update uh, the undercloud from the 10 version to the 10.z. Uh, for Red Hat, 10.z means the latest bits for that, uh, that major release. So once your uh, undercloud has been uh, upgraded, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to update your uh, images, which is used to deploy your overcloud. So here I make a backup of the images and then I wind up injecting a password in case something goes drastically wrong so I can get onto the nodes uh, at a later point. 
So we wound up updating the images and loading those into Glance, and then the next step will be to actually uh, pr perform the update, the 10.z up, uh, update to all of the overcloud nodes. So if, if anyone's actually done a minor update before in uh, triple O, this, you're probably familiar with uh, this whole process right here. Um, the key thing is the reboot uh, that is required in order to uh, move on to the uh, Open vSwitch 2.9. So <laughs> I'm displaying here the, uh, the command that's actually used to uh, perform the update. So it's actually broken into two, to two sections. Uh, the update plan, which actually updates the overcloud plan, and then, uh, then you actually run the, the update itself, which will update the nodes themselves. The, the, the videos here are cropped section, sectional videos. The actual whole video is actually available also on uh, YouTube from start to finish. Um, so again, I'm just displaying the difference between the deploy command that was used and the, the update plant in order, so you can see the, that there's, you use the exact same environment variables and everything that we use to actually do the deployment. One thing, yeah. one difference with this fast forward upgrade procedure and other fast forward upgrade uh, examples that the community has done, not in a Red Hat distribution, is that this uh, update is exactly where we do the um, operating system upgrade as well yeah. as the OpenStack um, upgrade, uh, sorry, update. So th that's really important because in other um, examples, we see uh, that uh, done at the same time. So upgra upgrading the operating system is usually a lot more disruptive. So this procedure allows for less disruption while the operating system is being upgraded. And then we move to the fast forward. Yeah. So, so, so as part of the, uh, the update procedure there, you can see that there's breakpoints inserted that, so you can uh, specify which nodes you wanted to actually apl provide, uh, apply the update to. Again, this will not reboot the nodes, um, but you may choose to update specific nodes at specific times. Um, and then uh, what you see here is I just piped yes to the there because I want to update everything uh, for the sake of time in, in the demo. But in a production environment when you actually get there, you may want to update, uh, up, apply the update to specific nodes, reboot those, um, and, then apply, and then apply it to other nodes at other times during uh, specific maintenance windows. Um, so to Maria's point, the, uh, the repo changes that I switched from, uh, uh, that are gonna happen at, late, at the later point, that is just the OpenStack bits repositories that are gonna be changed from 10 to 11 to 12 to 13. The uh, operating system repos stay, uh, stay in place, so that's why all of the operating system bits actually get uh, updated as part of the 10.z uh, application, the very first one. And again, sometimes you may want to reboot anyway because there's probably a new kernel out there or something, so you want to update the bits for your, uh, your OS. <clears throat> so there's, uh, as you can see, there's lots of useful messages that are uh, displayed as it's going through that it's in progress. The, one of the things you'll note here, um, the hash here that is listed for the node is actually the internal hash of the process. It actually maps to the last node that's actually listed there. Um, I believe there is a BZ in order to get that to uh, opened in order to match that up. So at the completion of, uh, at the completion of this video, um, after everything's updated here, I'm gonna just uh, jump through all the excitement here. All right. So one thing I'm showing here is I'm using Ansible to go out to all of the nodes and, and uh, display the version of Open vSwitch on all of the overcloud nodes. And as you can see, there's still 261, nothing's changed. Uh, so again, in a real world environment, you would, uh, you would specify times and reboot your controller nodes in a, in a sequential order to ensure high availability, and then do workload migration using live migration to move your nodes from one, uh, from one um, compute to another in order to ensure you maintain consistency. So this is gonna go through and reboot the nodes. Oops. And there I show that uh, 
uh, Open vSwitch has been uh, updated to 291 across the environment, or 290, sorry. Okay, so the, the second set of questions that we typically get from, from, from the customers when we do perform these workshops. Um, so how can I handle the workload for this required reboot uh, to enable them to the new version of OVS? Or how do I in general handle the, the workloads uh, whenever any services require a, a restart? Uh, so I would say there's two type of workloads, the ones that can be migrated and the ones that cannot be migrated. Um, so pretty binary answer here, but you know if you if you think about it, the the very easy answer is if you have a work like just typical VMs that are not taking advantage of any hardware underneath uh, directly, then the traditional procedure procedure is to upgrade in a rolling fashion, uh, either one compute at a time or multiple computes at a time, but before reboot. Um, you know, live migrate or evacuate these certain hosts uh, so there's no uh, disruption to the services. Uh, for the, unfortunately, for the, for the VMs or for the services that are attached to the particular compute hosts, uh, workloads like SRIOV, uh, enable VMs, uh, today they don't uh, allow for the, for the live migration, so, so you just need to plan the outage for these, for these uh, particular workloads. Uh, but then again, we'll give you the option to really be very per, uh, prescriptive on which compute host is gonna go down, right? So you can plan that ahead and, and be proactive about it. Uh, how long does it take to up upgrade OSP 10 to OSP 13, right? So we have a, when we recorded this video, we did this in a, in pretty early state, uh, stage of the fast forward upgrade being being out there. It was just before the GA. And for the six servers that we have, it took us roughly six hours, right? So this is a this is pretty pretty long time. Uh, we know that with the with the updates that came out after that, uh, I believe we got uh, recently we tested 45 servers in about four hours. Uh, so the time went down tr uh, tremendously. And so that, that, <clears throat> that timing was also doing a rolling up update to keep the uh, VMs up as, uh, as well. So, uh, so we, when we do the test, we try to do a, more like a real world test. Yeah, but, but that also brings me to the, to the next question. Can, can you break that, the whole, you know, still lengthy process into the phases, right? Maybe you don't want to take the, the big outage, of like six hours outage or even four hours outage. And, and you definitely can. You can break the process into into the phases, and then uh, maybe not affect your your production environment as as much as as you would if you had to do everything from A to Z in one swing. Uh, and we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later too. Sorry, and yeah, one phase could be the entire procedure for the update, which is what Darren just showed. Just do that, and then wait until your next window, and then do the fast forward. Next. Yeah, so. <clears throat> So with the fast forward upgrade, at, at this point, your environment is still up stable and you can still do any kind of um, changes to your environment, scale it or, or what have you. Uh, once you start the actual upgrade procedure, um, the, the, it goes into a maintenance, but we're scaling, you can't do uh, cloud scaling functions and stuff like that. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so uh, then the next video is gonna show you this next phase, if you will. So we're, we, we try to break it down into the phases that, that you could use in your, in your environments as well. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna take the op Red Hat OpenStack uh, controllers. Directors. Oh, director, sorry. And then we're gonna move it to, uh, for each of the uh, releases. So from 10 to 11, from 11 to 12, 12 to 13. So this, this would be still as you would normally upgrade from N to N plus one. However, under cloud upgrades uh, very, very quickly. Yeah, so the uh, general um, process of do performing the uh, under cloud update, uh, upgrade is essentially changing your repositories to point to the new OpenStack bits. Um, st stopping all of the services, uh, running the upgrade process uh, from one version to the next, and then typically there's about five um, validation commands you want to run to make sure all the services are up and running. 
Um, so as you can see here, I am basically uh, changed my repositories from 10 to 11. I'm stopping the services, and then I'm going to go ahead and run the, the upgrade command. Um, so the, you uh, wind up running, um, you wind up updating uh, specific packages, uh, the triple O packages first, and then when you go ahead and you actually run the uh, upgrade command uh, secondary to that, that's when it actually performs the upgrade of the packages and any configuration changes uh, that are required. Uh, it's, it's the same exact process to go from uh, 10 to 11 to 12 to 13 for the director. Uh, the only minor change is um, to go, when we go from 11 to 12, uh, we actually, and then 12 to 13, we actually incorporated the process of stopping the services um, when you uh, actually perform the upgrade process. Uh, in the early days, uh, if you didn't stop the processes, uh, you could uh, cause some headaches for yourself with uh, duplicate processes running and stuff. Um, so these are the commands here that uh, I, I, typical, I typically run after the, uh, the upgrade process. Um, one note that we'll also make uh, later is in 12, um, the, there's uh, one of the Nova commands, the Nova cert uh, daemon is deprecated. So you will actually see when you do that update, uh, upgrade later uh, in the video here, you'll actually see that uh, it shows it as disabled. It's still listed, but it's not functional. Uh, it's been deprecated in, op in OpenStack. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, anyone who's any, ever patched anything uh, ever uh, knows that it's basically boring. <laughs> yeah, ho yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's boring. Um, let me jump over here. So again, um, so we did our, we did the reboot uh, from 10 to 10Z, and that's uh, that that one is uh, required for the daemon. Um, be best practices are to uh, reboot as well um, for the undercut. It's not it's not mandatory, um, but we did it anyway just because uh, we wanted to account for timing uh, for customers who actually do provide do do that reboot. Again, there's no operating system changes here um, from uh, one version to the other. It, that was all done in the 10.z. Uh, here you here's where you see um, the top line there where it shows a Nova cert. Uh, is enabled and down, but that's because it has been deprecated. <clears throat> All right, and that brings us to the the third set of questions that we typically get from the from the clients. Uh, so, are there any alternatives for for fast forward upgrade from the from the Red Hat perspective? And I can think of two from, from top of my head, right? So the first one would be if you are on, OS, on any version of OSP, we've been supporting the N plus one upgrade since OSP, at least OSP 7, uh, at least from the director perspective. Um, so, so this is always, always has been there. One thing to keep in mind though, if you are on OSP 10 and you're trying to move to OSP 11 manually, OSP 11 is out of support right now, right? So that, that kind of brings an obstacle here. Um, and OSP 12 will be out of support in December. Yeah. Uh, the, another alternative that, you know, some of our clients inquiry about is, uh, maybe trying to create a parallel environment with the, with the vanilla installation of, of OSP 13 and then migrate the workloads from, from, from the old version to the new versions. And it's definitely a viable option. Uh, we, you know, we don't have as many tooling for that type of migration as we, as we have for the fast forward upgrade. Uh, but this is... <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we actually had a session earlier today that is recorded, so you can go see it, where we partner with other companies that actually do this migration for you. We just don't have that kind of fully out of the box inside the Red Hat OpenStack product. But, you know, that's there's Trillio, a... Right? That's yeah. Trillio. Trillio. We did that earlier today. Um, and then another question uh, around that of how can another alternative is because some of the workloads that our customers are running uh, need to be fully certified, so need to have a number of partners uh, um, software on top of Red Hat OpenStack that is fully certified in the whole stack, and they have not done that for 13, so some workloads can migrate, others cannot, so they choose to reuse some hardware to, to install a new cloud, and then 
over time, not fully migrate everything, but over time start moving in that direction. And then new workloads obviously go in the new cloud, and then all workloads slowly transition. Obviously, that there's nothing slowly about the fast forward. The entire cloud at the end will be 13, so. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so, so the next question is, what are some of the main concerns with the, with the, while the FFU steps are, are happening, right? So probably the biggest concern is we, you know, the, the upgrade does require at least one reboot, right? So there, something to keep in mind, you will have to plan for it. And, and you will, if there is a workload that you won't be able to move around, you have to plan for the outage and notify users and, uh, and just be aware of that. Just to be clear, the part that requires the reboot is the update piece that happens before this whole fast forward procedure. And that update procedure has been introduced since OpenStack 7. So it's been maturing over time and it's something that actually some of our customers are already using. And that procedure itself is something that should be done as part of your regular operation and maintenance. Okay. And the last question, uh, is there a point of no return, right? So we mentioned a little bit earlier that it's, it's absolutely crucial for you guys to take a backups before you get into it. And there is actually a point in the deployment or in the upgrade uh, where we uh, recommend moving forward all the way rather than trying to recover back from maybe some error state and, and rolling back to OSP 10. And we're going to show that in the a, in a next set of slides where that no, of, uh, no point of return is. Uh, so I'm, this, this will set us up to the next phase of the, of the video of the upgrade process. Uh, so what we're, we're going to go over is preparing the overcloud uh, containers. Uh, so, so again, one of the major changes we did between 10 and 13 is we containerized all of the services. Uh, so we're going to walk you through the process of how this, uh, how this step is being done uh, within the fast forward upgrade. And then, of course, you're, you're, there's going to be some changes to the, uh, to the YAML files and to the configuration files that you, that you have in place. Uh, so we're going to cover that as well. Uh, in, in the first phase of this demo, we're going to move the uh, Red Hat OpenStack controller. One controller is going to get to the OSP 12, uh, so it's going to get upgraded. The database and the, and the packages are going to get upgraded to that, to that level. Uh, the rest of the controllers will stay at OSP 10, but will have the access to the repositories for the latest and greatest. All of the controllers are actually going to have access to latest and greatest OSP 13 repositories. And then the final step in this section is we're going to bring the single controller that was in OSP 12 to OSP 13 and the remaining two controllers to also to OSP 13. So we're going to pretty much finish with the upgraded controller layer. So uh, the reason why we actually step through and uh, upgrade one controller through 10, 11, 12, and 13, uh, 12, and then ultimately the 13 is uh, during that process, that's when um, the databases and everything are going to actually be um, be uh, updated, uh, upgraded. Uh, I just want to pause here for really one second because, um, as you can see here, we copy the uh, we copy templates over. Uh, one of the key notes, the key things we mentioned earlier was doing a, a basic OpenStack 13 deployment. You can generate your templates by going through that process and getting templates that you know are known working state. Um, that's again, that's critical. That's a critical point that I wanted to just point out um, because uh, everyone who's ever been, everyone who's been uh, successful in the least amount of time um, has deployed a 13 vanilla environment first, utilized the templates and what they learned there as part of the fast forward upgrade process. <clears throat> So as we mentioned, uh, going from 10 to 13, we wind up uh, moving uh, to containerized services. So here what we're actually doing is we run a command that will generate two files, the, uh, the overcloud images file and the local registry images file. The local registry images file is utilized to uh, create a registry on the undercloud in our case. You could also use satellite server or you could point uh, directly to the Red Hat repositories. So as you can see here, it lists all the images uh, out on uh, accessredhat.com. Uh, access 
You wind up using that to load those into the director, and we're using the director as a registry in our demo environment. And then this other file, the overcloud images file, is, is consumed by um, heat uh, as it's doing the deployment at, for where it should be pulling the uh, images from. The push destination there is the IP address and uh, port of the registry on our director node in this, uh, in this demo. So this, is, this command that's being run here is actually what's pulling the uh, images down uh, onto uh, the director node. So the other, other main part of this is that um, with the overcloud now, the overcloud actually connects back to the undercloud um, for, uh, to access certain services. So you do need to uh, add the undercloud certificate out to your overcloud node so that it, it, it accepts that handshake. Uh, most companies use a, a, uh, a signing CA for all, both environments, so they, they, they would have, they'd be able to skip this step here. But there's uh, playbooks in all of our, in our documentation on exactly how to, uh, how to do this. I'm just looking at the time here. Um, like I said, this is a, a long uh, thing. This command here, um, this command here, the uh, second line there that shows the uh, fast forward repos. This is a YAML file that uh, points to all of the different repos, 11, 12, and 13, uh, that are consumed during the process in order to uh, point the overcloud nodes to the right repositories as it's doing the step upgrade. So I'm, I'm gonna uh, jump ahead here. Um, just because uh, I, I just realized we're running short on time here and we definitely didn't want to get through everything. So this part here is, so we've, we ran the, um, up here is where we ran the uh, fast forward prepare, so that prepared the environment. The fast forward upgrade run is actually where it actually goes through and uh, performs the uh, upgrade of the uh, single controller all the way, uh, I'm sorry, it stages all the packages and prepares, uh, it runs the single controller all the way to OpenStack 12 and then sets the repository for that single controller and all of the controllers to, open st to OpenStack 13. So here's where we actually ran the, uh, ran the command that uh, actually upgraded the, this will actually run uh, and update all of the controllers to OpenStack 13. So by the, by, as Chris mentioned, by the time this is done, um, the entire environment has been uh, upgraded, uh, the entire, entire control plane has been upgraded to 13. All right, so I know we're running out of time, so I'm gonna try to get, to get through the question. I know you might have some questions at the end. So the last phase is pretty much uh, upgrading all of the remaining nodes from OSP 10 to OSP 13, and that includes all your computes and all your Ceph nodes if you, if you use them as well. Um, and at the very end, we're doing this extra step calling converge where we are um, making sure that, that our templates are aligned with what is actually out there in the, uh, on your overcloud. So, I, so I, we, we definitely want to leave time for Q&A. Um, at the end of this slide deck, we actually have the, uh, a link to all the videos. But um, so you can actually go and watch this. So I'm not going to play the video because uh, it, it will it does take it it does take a couple minutes. So we'll just move on to the, the next step. But I just wanted to mention the converge step. Uh, as you can see, we use Ansible a lot for the fast forward upgrade. So what the converge step does is it pulls your your deployment stack that's within the undercloud back into a, a usable state that you can then uh, use the standard up, uh, upgrade processes eventually to go from 13 to 14. So we do a lot of thing, a lot of updates and stuff and changes outside of uh, the triple O, the, the, the heat. Uh, so what the converge step does is it gets everything back in line in your deployment plan with what actually occurred. So then from that point on, it's just like you installed a, a vanilla uh, OpenStack 13 environment. All right, just to just to summarize, we wanted to finish with the, with the Q&A, but before, let's, uh, let us give you some best practices that we, uh, that we learned during the, the time we had with the fast forward upgrade at, in, the, in the wild. 
So first and the most important, get yourself familiar with the OSP 13 deployment, right? So make sure you can deploy the environment that you, with the same variations and the same customizations that you have today in OSP uh, 10, make sure you can do the same with OSP 13. Uh, so that would say if you, if you do that, you're 50% there. Uh, practice the fast forward in your lab and pre-prod before. Uh, that's pretty, pretty common sense, I think. Uh, back up the under cloud and over cloud, but not just back up, but make sure you know how to restore it to be, you know. Um, uh, get help from Red Hat, right? Where we, we're here for you. Uh, we'll be more than happy. We've done it before, so we'll be more than happy to guide you through the process. Uh, and again, plan for it. There might be some outages if, if your uh, workloads cannot move from, from one place to, you know, to the other. There is going to be some, some outages, and, and, but again, you can do it in, in phases. Uh, so I think that brings us almost to the end, but uh, we're going to have uh, uh, videos posted here, and we're going to share this presentation with you. And uh, that will, we can still take a question or two if you guys yeah. have any. Thank you very much. And any questions? Yeah. So yeah. one question I had is, it looks like your, all the controllers upgrade to OSP 13 while the computes are running OSP 10. Is there compatibility issues uh, with the Nova compute on OSP 10 talking to scheduler on 13 or something S of that sort? So during that time, we mentioned that there was no scaling and there were no, um, yeah, there's, there's degradation on the, on the cloud in general. But one thing that we did test was the fact that the data plane continues to still be up. So networking routes that were already established can already continue to do, to do so. Workloads that needed to, say, reach the internet were able to continue to do so during that time. If you can check the video of the talk we did in uh, Vancouver, we specify exactly what is the data plane outage and, and, and where are the outages that are happening and when, when do we have those breaks. But do we recommend that there should be no control plane activity for no spawning that, of new that VMs? That is what is expected during the fast forward piece. So data yeah. plane is operational but control plane will take a hit. It, the, the workloads that are running in the, in the, in the in compute nodes are, are still working. Any other question? All right, we're going to be outside. Thank you so much for your time. And hopefully we didn't run too much over time. Thank you.